We all know the speed of light. It's a fundamental constant, precisely 299,792,458 meters per second in a vacuum. This value is etched into our scientific understanding, a cornerstone of modern physics. But here's a profound secret. No one has ever truly measured the one-way speed of light. This isn't a limitation of our technology or a flaw in our instruments. It's a deep conceptual challenge rooted in the very fabric of space, time, and how we define measurement itself. We can measure the speed of light, but only in a very specific way. What we can and do measure is the round trip speed of light. Imagine sending a light pulse from point A to a mirror at point B, then timing how long it takes for the light to return to A. This is a straightforward measurement. We divide the total distance traveled by the total time elapsed. This gives us an average speed for the light's journey out and back. Every experiment, from FISO's rotating gears to modern laser interferometers, measures this two-way speed. The challenge arises when we try to measure the one-way speed. To do this, you would need two perfectly synchronized clocks, one at point A and another at point B. You'd send a light pulse from A at a specific time, say T1. When the light arrives at B, the clock there would record its arrival time, T2. The one-way speed would then be the distance between A and B divided by the difference T2 minus T1. This seems simple enough, but it hides a critical flaw. How do you synchronize those two distant clocks? The most obvious method is to use light signals. You could send a light pulse from A to B to synchronize the clock at B. But to do that, you would already need to know the one-way speed of light. This creates a logical loop, a circular argument. You need the one-way speed to synchronize the clocks, but you need synchronized clocks to measure the one-way speed. It's a classic chicken and egg problem in physics. Albert Einstein famously addressed this in his theory of special relativity. He didn't measure the one-way speed of light. Instead, he postulated it. He stated that the speed of light in a vacuum is constant for all inertial observers, regardless of the motion of the light source. This postulate is fundamental to special relativity. It means that the one-way speed of light is defined to be equal to the two-way speed. It's a convention, a foundational assumption, rather than an empirical measurement. This concept is known as the conventionality of simultaneity. Defining what simultaneous means for events happening at different locations is not an absolute objective truth. It depends on how you choose to synchronize your clocks. If you assume the one-way speed of light is the same in all directions, then you can define simultaneity. But this assumption is precisely what we cannot independently verify through measurement. It's a choice we make to build our physical theories. This conventionality has profound implications. In 1983, the meter was redefined. It is now defined as the length of the path traveled by light in a vacuum during a time interval of 1 2 792,458 of a second. This means the speed of light is no longer a measured quantity in the traditional sense. It is a defined constant. We don't measure it. We use it to define our unit of length. So, when we say the speed of light is a constant, we are referring to its two-way speed, which is empirically verifiable. The one-way speed, however, remains a convention, a postulate necessary for the coherence of our physical laws. This isn't a weakness in physics. It's a testament to its rigor and self-awareness. It highlights that some fundamental aspects of reality are not simply out there to be measured, but are intertwined with the very definitions and conventions we use to describe them. Understanding this distinction deepens our appreciation for the elegance and complexity of physics. It shows that even the most fundamental constants can have layers of conceptual meaning beyond their numerical value. The speed of light is not just a number, it's a gateway to understanding the profound relationship between space, time, and measurement itself. It reminds us that the universe often challenges our most intuitive assumptions.